Every single year you say that it's going to be the year, but then the next year you say the same thing about the upcoming year because you realize how much you weren't able to get done the year prior. Why is this the case? Why is it that it seems as though we're making the same New Year's resolutions each year? Well, I actually believe that perhaps we're not being thoughtful about the process, that there are elements to it that can actually guide us in the right directions if we're cognizant about it. If we are able to take practical steps to addressing those issues, I really do believe we'll have a lot more success. Hello everyone, my name is June Yu. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Obviously, this is a time of the year where there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of passion, there's a lot of really positive vibes, if you will, just because everyone is making goals that will better themselves in the future. But how can we sustain that level of happiness and excitement into March, into April, into August, and then the end of the next year? How can we actually achieve our goals past the emotions that are heightened in the first few weeks? That's the real question here, and that's what I wanna address in this video, and I think that hopefully I'll do a good job of it. So please, of course, leave comments below, ask me any questions, tell me if I missed anything, so I would love to have a conversation with you. And of course, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. With that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Number one, have a plan. As obvious as that might sound, you would be shocked, if we're being honest with ourselves, else, how often it is that we're tempted to just create the goals and never take the additional steps of outlining a plan for us to achieve those goals. And you might ask why, and I believe the answer is because that's probably the hardest part, aside from the fact of actually executing it, but a big part of executing it is the planning. It's how can you create a plan that's thoughtful? How can you create a plan that's practical and effective? How can you create a plan so that you can withstand the distractions of the world as we know it? If you think about the the reality of the world, a lot of people make the same goals, right? So there are fitness goals. They wouldn't be in the best shape of their life. So they'll go to the gym an X amount of times, or maybe it's a career goal. Maybe it's a certain promotion. Maybe it's something related to their personal life in some form of or aspect. Why is it that only select few individuals have progress on the goals year after year? and the rest of us are stuck making the same ones. Well, I believe and I would argue that a big factor in that is the planning. How do you plan the right way? Well, let's talk about it. You see, I'm a fan of goals. I think goals are great and they're powerful when done right, but New Year's resolutions are probably the epitome of doing it the wrong way. And the idea here is that with New Year's resolutions, it's all about these ginormous goals, these goals that we have not developed the skill set to actually achieve the ones that take so much discipline and consistency. And if you're watching this video, you're probably my age and you might have not developed those skills yet to be able to establish them, to, to actually execute them. And so you're setting yourself up for failure. As much as the rest of the world is going to tell you to shoot for the moon or shoot for the stars in that last week of December when you're creating the goals, I want you to listen to me very carefully and prevent yourself from doing that. Or if you're going to, to make those broader goals, that's fine. Take this additional step. Think, what am I gonna do in the first two weeks of January? Seriously, just the first two weeks of January. And be detail-oriented with how you're going to approach that plan. Be practical, okay? So if the idea is you wanna be fit, that's your broader goal, and you want to gain 20 pounds of muscle by the end of 2024, that's a ginormous goal. In the first two weeks, the idea should be, how do I get myself to go to the gym frequently? Yeah, probably going five times a week, right off the bat is not very likely for me. I might be able to be successful and the motivation is high for the first few weeks, but I know that I'm gonna burn out because I wouldn't have developed the actual discipline, the routine that comes along with it. And so, you know what? All I'm gonna do for that first week is just do at-home workouts. I haven't trained consistently before, so before I take that additional step to go into a gym consistently, I wanna make sure that I can actually get my body to move on a consistent basis. So for five days out of the week, I'm gonna do some form of a walk or a jog or a run or some push-ups, some sit-ups, whatever it might be to start. And then the second week, I might progressively increment and say, I'm going to add in some stretching in the mornings. So I'm going to get my body moving right off the bat and then I'm gonna have a training session at home later on in the day. So that'll be your second week progress and just start there. Because once you're able to establish um, success 
early on with those micro goals, what you'll do is do two things. You're gonna establish momentum in the right direction, in the positive direction. Two, you're gonna build some confidence because now you've been able to stick with the promise that you've set out for yourself. And then by the time that week three comes along, then you can go ahead and progressively increment there. And if you failed on the second week, that's fine, don't give up. What you're gonna say is, all right, how can I make this a little bit more achievable? How can I go back one more layer and make another micro goal for myself? Have a really successful first week and second week of January with all your goals, and then you can start to incrementally progress over it. You see, what that's gonna train you to do is focus on the details, focus on creating a practical plan for yourself, and you'll get better and better with this with more effort and with more practice, and so you're gonna get a better awareness of who you are and your tendencies by month two. But throughout that entire process, you're practicing how to create these plans and it's gonna go a really long way for yourself. So have a plan, but do it the right way. Number two, discover your purpose. You see how I didn't say find motivation or find your inspiration? Because that's bogus, <laughs> okay? It's great when motivation and inspiration are there, but those are based on emotion. And what do we know about emotion? They ebb and flow. And so yes, I bet you're gonna have a lot of success when the rest of the world is going to have a lot of success and that's January, February, and March. But when that motivation dies down, what do you look to to continue pressing forward? And I believe that's your purpose, right? We know that perspective drives your performance. So what is your perspective on? How are you viewing what it is that you're doing? That's so important. And so perhaps it's something related to your family. Perhaps it's something related to your faith. Perhaps it's something related to an ambition that you've always had. Perhaps it's something to do with a relationship. Perhaps it's something to do with some financial goals. Whatever it is, all I ask for you is to make it about something bigger than you. You see, because if we're just constantly in this selfish thought of, it's for me, it's only for me. You're gonna be quickly handed something in life that's much bigger than you. And it's gonna be really hard to overcome that obstacle when everything is about you. Instead, if you can serve something bigger than you, if you can have a purpose that goes beyond you, that's your driving factor. So when it gets really hard, you look to that for a little bit of that extra push in the right direction. This is probably a really uncomfortable thing to do. Asking yourself, why am I doing this? Why do I even have this goal? It's a step that I guarantee 99% of the world doesn't take because it's an uncomfortable thing to ask yourself because you have to be really honest and keep yourself accountable in that moment when you try to describe to yourself, this is why. This is what I wanna get out of it and this is why I want to continue pressing forward with it because I know it'll be hard. Yeah, there's gonna be distractions. There's gonna be days that I don't feel like doing it, but I need to establish a perspective to drive my performance. This purpose is much bigger than me and I can rely on it as my driving factor. So what is that purpose for you? You're not gonna find it out immediately. I really don't believe it's something that you just think about and it's right there. I think it's something that you have to craft. It's something that you have to really spend time with and, and sit with for a little while. But I promise you that type of perspective will go such a far away when it, it gets to the hard days. And those are the ones that actually matter, right? Number three, establish a routine. Mel Robbins has this wonderful quote that goes, never let your mood dictate what you do. Always take action first because movement changes your mood. And it couldn't be more true. And that's something that I've recognized for myself. When I first heard that quote, I put it into action, literally. And when I was having those low moments, I, I would go through this rule of the three, two, one method where I had to make this hard decision to get out of my comfort zone and, and go work out or go study or go fulfill that responsibility that I've been procrastinating on. And as I count down from three, immediately when it hits one, I take action. And when I do that, I find that I build momentum, that it's not as bad as I thought it was. Actually, starting it was by far the most difficult part. And so a routine helps you do that on a practical basis for every element of your day. And so a routine for you shouldn't look like a routine for me, right? Because we're different. We have different needs, we have different days, we have different desires in general. It's important that you find out, okay, here is a list of priorities for me. Here's a list of things that I want to stick to. I wanna create a routine, one that's practical, one that is something that I can actually live by something that's not gonna feel like this incredibly difficult thing to stick to, right? I, I think that sometimes people make those 
20 step morning routines and it's like, how likely is it that you're going to stick to those 20 things on a daily basis? Think about that initial friction to just try to practice a 20 step routine. Yeah, probably not likely. Can you have perhaps a four step morning routine, a three step morning routine? Can you have a night routine? Can you have a way of winding down that you can stick to on a daily basis so you can train your mind to know, okay, this is the time that I need to get to bed because I need some quality rest. Is there something that you can put in for yourself so that right after school, when you probably just wanna go to sleep and not do anything and then you are mad at yourself by the time the night comes around, can you integrate something right when you get home or maybe you don't even go directly home, you go somewhere else to do some work? Like, are there things that you can implement into your schedule on a daily basis so your routine that can push you towards the right direction that you know will become a routine filled with habits for yourself that will allow you to have um, a lot of success even when you don't want to. I think a routine is so important and it really does shock me of how many people don't have one. And I think that people think I'm more of a spontaneous person. I, I don't need a routine. It's like, no, you probably would benefit from some form a routine. It doesn't mean that you have to be super strict about it, right? Like, of course, there's going to be exceptions, but can you create a routine for yourself that will allow you to have success on most days? That will probably benefit most of us, right? Even if you are a spontaneous individual, it doesn't mean that you have to have every little bit of your days planned out. It just means that there are certain things that you go through that train your mind to one, feel energized in the morning, number two, to wind down at night, and then of course, be successful or productive or whatever that looks like for you throughout the day. So have some form of routine that's something that you can stick to. I think it's so important. Think about how you're going to establish one that you can stick to for the, this upcoming year, because it will, just as much as everything we talked about before, allow you to have the success that you want to have on the days that you don't feel like it. Okay, and, and actually discipline is something that you can train yourself upon, right? So understand that the longer you practice with that routine, the better you'll get at sticking to it, the better you'll get at perhaps if you wanna add nuances to that routine for yourself that you can actually stick to those new additional pieces to it. So, so give that a try. Number four, keep your goals private. Keep this plan that you have for this upcoming year private. I think that this is an issue that most people run into. It's, it's that everyone is in the spirit of creating New Year's resolutions, so you're under the impression that people actually care about your goals. They don't, they don't. And even if they act like they care, they're gonna do either one of two things. It's gonna be one, they'll confuse you because they'll ask a ton of questions and add complexity that doesn't need to be there. Or number two, they'll just doubt you and try to force you to quit or try to make you feel like it was a dumb idea. So you're better off keeping it private, really. Obviously, if there's those people that are really intimate with you, go ahead and tell them your goals, but is it something for you to post on your stories? Like, is it something for you to make an announcement to everyone? Is it something for you to go ahead and tell your entire extended family when you guys are together at New Year's for celebration? No, I don't believe it is. It just adds unnecessary levels of stress, unnecessary levels of complexity, unnecessary levels of confusion, unnecessary levels of doubt that you do not need right now. Okay, because these goals are personal to you. These goals matter to you. These goals are your life. This resolution, this new year is your life, right? And the more you're able to hone in on that and go about working in silence, there's actually a poster right above me that is out of frame, but you work in silence and you let your success make the noise. By keeping that private for yourself, you'll be surprised how much you're able to do, how much you're able to actually execute without that unnecessary levels of additional distractions is what I'll call it. And there's a, another point that I wanna make here. You will be shocked how powerful you are as an individual. I used to be the type that would wait on other people to agree with my ideas to help me with a certain initiative before ever starting it because I constantly doubted what I was capable of doing. But the reality of the matter is, the better I got at just starting, no matter how much I was lacking, and just giving it my best effort and learning as I go, the more I realize, yeah, I'm actually able to get a lot of this done. And all of that experience becomes legitimate experience that I can count on for difficult moments in the future. I was able to actually develop a skill set that was high value for other initiatives in the future. So 
have confidence in yourself. You don't need anybody right now to, to help you with whatever goal you got. It's private to you, keep it private, and do whatever you can on a daily basis to achieve it. And I promise you when that success starts to come around, it will be known. It doesn't, you don't have to go out and proclaim it. People will know, okay? That's my biggest tip to you. Again, obviously I'm a caveat that if there's intimate people around you, go ahead and tell them. That's not what I'm saying, I'm saying, be careful before you make it public. Be careful about adding that additional pressure because I think that you would be better off without it. Number five, and the very last one, reflections, constant reflections, journaling, some form of honest accountability with yourself is integral. Okay, it's one thing to establish the goals. It's one thing to have a really good plan, but it's another to be able to be aware of your own situation as that plan is being executed. Where are your weak points so you can improve upon them? Where are your strengths so you can continue building upon them? Those individuals that have an awareness of how they're doing are the ones that can have success the quickest because it's so funny that there's individuals that will be so focused and so locked in on their goal without ever doing a reflection though. They'll work, they'll work, they'll work, and then months down, they look down or years down, they're realizing, I didn't even wanna be here. Like, why am I here? Like, yeah, that was a lot of hard work, but I don't even like where I ended up. Having that reflection allows you on a continuous basis, guide you in the right direction. You can ask yourself, okay, am I being fulfilled by the process? Am I, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? What am I able to learn? What am I able to ask help for? What am I able to do to enlarge in my perspective so that I can perform better? Like, what are those reflection questions that you ask for yourself so that you can be constantly steered in the right direction? Again, this world is filled with distractions as it is, and if you're not doing those reflections to check upon yourself, there's a good chance that you'll be headed in the wrong direction, or perhaps you're not focusing on things that even move the needle, right? So you might work, 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 and realize, yeah, I'm not even making any real progress because I'm focused on the wrong thing. So ensure that you're doing some form of reflection. Again, I talk about journaling all the time because journaling has absolutely transformed my life and it's such a cliche, but I do believe it's a cliche for a reason. Can you create distance between you and your thoughts to have that honest accountability with a piece of paper so you can look at that on a daily basis and think to yourself, yeah, I'm doing something right or yeah, I'm not doing something right. But either way, you're gonna be headed in the right direction because you're aware of it. With that being said, that will be the whole video. I think that this was pretty short, but I think it's so important that we have some of these important things to consider when we're making resolutions, when we're trying to make this upcoming year the best one yet. I think that people get lost in the fold, that they just do what everyone else is doing without ever being thoughtful about it. And so I hope that this video was able to help you in some form or fashion. Please leave some comments below in terms of questions or maybe things that I missed that we want to talk about that will help all of us enter this next year in the best way possible. Of course, give a thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, I love you guys so much. Take care, okay?